A classic horror movie is about a group of strangers who get stranded in the woods and are hunted by a cult of crazy farmers. Then it turns into Netflix complaining about people not liking their movies. It opens with the deer head and this girl tied to a table, and some guy drags a hammer in and then does this as it cuts to an RV driving down the road. Then this girl throwing up. Turns out she's pregnant and has a trial for something, and her mother saying that she has some surgery in the morning. Wanna guess what kind? But instead she's going on a trip in an RV, because nothing bad ever happens in an RV in a horror movie. Fabrizio is making some travel video while he drives Sofia and Mark, Ricardo the doctor, and Elisa to wherever they're going. But first, he says this creepy line. So goodbye to you, dear friends of Fabrizio, and always remember, we'll be friends till the end of time. What is this, Chucky? Jeez. Anyway, they're driving down the road, and Fabrizio offers them beer from the cooler in the back. By the way, this movie was originally Italian, so every once in a while, there's subtitles. I'm assuming it's when they're speaking English, but then why are the subtitles in English and not Italian? Anyway, they're all drinking except for Fabrizio because he's driving, and Elisa because she's pregnant but they basically force Elisa to. I'm assuming for something later. Fabrizio and Mark are talking about the Mafia and the mayor, and this gets Elisa sick, so they have to pull over. And Ricardo takes this opportunity to make an ominous phone call, even though his phone is obviously off, but gets interrupted by people arguing. This is because Mark decided the trip was taking too long or something, so he's gonna drive now. So they argue over who's gonna drive. Maybe let Fabrizio drive because it's his van? But they decide to let the drunk guy drive. What a bunch of morons. Just a side note, Fabrizio has a hearing aid because someone smashed his head into a wall once. It doesn't really affect the movie, but it says it, so here you go. While they're driving, they see this dead goat in the road, and Fabrizio grabs the wheel and crashes them into a tree, instead of just, you know, letting him run it over. Almost like he did it on purpose. But they're all fine, except Mark's leg is broken, because you need at least one person to get injured before the horror stuff starts. They try to call an ambulance, but... It doesn't work. <sighs> because, well, you know. And they're not even on the road anymore. They're in the middle of nowhere by this creepy house. How do they even get here? Hey, you know what's a good idea? Go up to it. Oh no, the van won't start. I think they decided, screw it, let's put every horror movie cliche we possibly can into this. These two are looking for the road, and they run into whatever nightmare this is. Meanwhile, Lisa notices the door to the house is open, so she decides to go inside, where she finds this deer head from earlier and these creepy pictures. Now would be a good time to leave. But instead, she goes to this room with the painting of the three knights of honor, basically creatures that are see no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. And the village sacrificed someone to them so they could bless the ground to grow food, but the villagers were then cursed to be their flock. Whatever that means. That night, Fabrizio goes to the woods to pee and sees these two creepy people. And the rest hear someone screaming in the house, so they decide, let's go check it out! When they're in the house, Fabrizio returns all freaked out and leads Ricardo out of the RV and into the house, but screw Mark, I guess. They go to the attic and find this thing with a girl inside. Then these red lights come on and sirens go off. And these three things drag Mark to the house because they left him alone. Are they intentionally making these people stupid? They then tie him to a table and start music. Okay, I get he's trying to keep her from making noise, but maybe don't make her watch. They then use this spike thing to, well, yeah. And then they just leave. Seriously, what was the point of that? Is this movie just doing random stuff now? The next morning, they get the girl out of this thing and leave. They're running through the woods and come across this car graveyard. We're not the first people. Really? What was your first clue? They then have this dumb argument. You're a hopeless case. A hopeless case? Of course you're saying it. We have to believe it. Because of course you're the expert. Just say it. Sure, I'll say it. If we're stuck here, it's because of your mark. How can you say that? You literally told him to. What is this movie even doing? Whatever, after some useless fighting for no reason, the sirens come back on, so they decide to leave. And after some wandering around, they end up right back at the creepy house. You gotta be kidding me. Seriously, how many cliches is this movie going to have? Anyway, the RV's gone, but at least they left a bottle of beer. That night, they sit in the attic and pass a beer bottle around as if they're gonna get drunk from one bottle. Well, except Fabricio. And they all tell their sad backstories because everyone in a horror movie needs a sad backstory. I guess they all fell asleep because Elisa wakes up to the sirens and everyone is gone. Oh great, they're tied up outside with the creepy cult people. So Fabricio drags her back inside and barricades the door. And all the cult people start doing some weird lip smacking thing. This is annoying, not scary. 
They then do some ritual thing where they cut off Sophia's eyes and Ricardo's ears. If they were going to do this here, why did they cut out the girl's tongue so early? Fabrizio and Elisa are still inside, and Elisa realizes that she didn't wake up during the kidnapping and that Fabrizio never drank any beer. So she finally figures out there must be something in the beer. So he tells her how scared he is and hugs her, and she hears someone talking through his hearing aid. So she grabs it from him and starts listening to it. And Fabrizio completely freaks out and starts calling her names. Because that doesn't make him look suspicious at all. Then he stands there while this guy grabs Elisa. Then it cuts to some weird dinner party with the mayor. You remember the mayor? Yeah, neither did I. What is this, Midsummer? Okay, we're doing Midsummer now. What is happening? Turns out this is the Mafia and the Three Knights thing is just a campground. And everything they went through was secretly being filmed and Fabrizio was behind it all. At this point, is anyone even surprised? And he's doing all this to make a horror movie. Why is the Mafia making a horror movie and why are they kidnapping and killing people? Couldn't they just make a horror movie if they wanted? What the hell? Whatever, I guess. Your movie totally sucks. It's just a carbon copy of other films. So they did all these cliches on purpose? That kind of makes it seem like a waste of time. Fabrizio then starts whining about how people want original movies and then complain when they get something that's too different or too graphic. And that's not completely what I'm doing right now at all. Elisa, um, frees herself and starts looking for Kiera, because I guess all the mobsters are gone now. Well, she doesn't find her, but she does find her dress in this prop tent. She then finds Fabrizio arguing with, what a surprise, Kiera in an RV. So that's why they cut her tongue out early. Kiera is getting ready for filming, I guess, and she opens the door, and when she opens the door, Elisa is there and shoots her. So Fabrizio decides it's a good idea to go after the lady with a shotgun and get shot too. She's then wandering in the woods again and runs into this kid. What is he doing there in the first place? Anyway, she decides it's a good idea to follow him. So it turns out they were in some military area and she finds this beach with who I'm assuming is the mafia people or not, who cares, and she gets a bunch of messages from her mom. Oh yeah, she's pregnant. I completely forgot about that because it's completely irrelevant. She then walks into the ocean and that's the end. Or is it? Because despite the fact that several of their members died and Elisa probably got rescued, the Mafia decided to make the movie anyway. It shows people commenting on it and some guy going to blood flicks, gee I wonder what that's supposed to be, to watch it. So he skips ahead and watches like 30 seconds of it and then clicks dislike. Because apparently if you didn't like Netflix's movie, you're a bad person. I didn't like this movie. It has so many horror movie cliches and stupid characters that it just got boring before the twist. I don't understand why they're relying on the one native who is just as lost as they are for everything. And they keep staying in the house that they know the creatures are coming to every night. There's just so many dumb decisions in this. The movie's in Italian and I watched the English dub so it's kind of hard to judge the acting in it. So I guess I'll judge the body language. Francisco Russo actually looks kind of creepy and even when he's pretending not to know what's going on. I think he's better though when he reveals who he really is. His mannerisms become more believable. Although before he was pretending to be someone pretending to be someone else. Matilda Anna Ingrid Lutz is good as Elisa. She actually looks like she's getting more and more distressed until she finally breaks as she goes through more hell. But there are times when it just looks like she's forcing it. This movie would have been better if it had ended after Elisa went into the ocean. The last part with the comments and the guy skipping ahead and disliking it came off as Netflix complaining about people not liking their movies. I'm sure there are people that do that, but do they really think that most people who dislike their movies don't even watch them, or do they just not like them for no reason? I don't know. It just comes off as, if you don't like this movie, then you're a bad person. So I hope you like this video, because if you didn't, you're a bad person. Don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, don't dislike it, and thanks for watching.